Hey everybody, it's Second Chance Adventures. Today's day number 245 after having gastric bypass surgery and I actually have some really cool news. So um, those that know me personally, um, I have always really been into orchestra and classical music. I started orchestra when I was like nine years old. When I was in the fourth grade. And um, when they first introduced it to us, um, if you want to sign up for orchestra or band or something like that, let us know if you're interested. You know what? I was really, really interested in that. But when I looked at the different choices, you know, violin, viola, cello, and bass, I knew right off the bat I could not choose a cello or bass because I knew if it came to my house, somebody would have destroyed it or not handle it properly when I wasn't there. I knew that would, would happen. And of course, it'd be my fault see, somehow. So I didn't want to go through all that. And then I thought to myself, you know, everybody's going to want to play a violin, especially all the girls. And all the girls did except one other one and myself. Everybody, even like almost all the guys wanted to, everybody played either a violin or then there was two people, myself included, that played viola and nobody chose a bass or a cello. Nobody. So I thought, I don't want to be and choose what everybody else is going to choose. I'm going to be different and I'm going to choose the viola. That's what I chose. And um, I played fourth, fifth grade. I played sixth, seventh, and eighth. And then in high school, it stopped, but I just played it at home by myself um, because I joined JROTC. And um, because of how the curriculum is, I wasn't able to do that and orchestra. Um, but I did have to have some kind of like, you know, music or art or something, you know, like that to graduate. So my senior year, I took a uh, freshman level orchestra because you know I can't go to the upper one without passing the freshman which was fine it was fine with me I was the only senior there but you know what that's okay the teacher there name is Mr. Crawford and I had him for sixth grade before I transferred to a different school for seventh and eighth grade really awesome guy knows his stuff um and what's funny is that this same guy Mr. Crawford um I ran into him in one of the school buildings here where I live and um, I was like, oh, hey, I haven't seen you in a really long time. How's it going? He's on my social media, but I haven't, like, seen him, seen him in years. So we're just kind of catching up a little bit. Like, yeah, I got married and I have a kid. And, you know, I'm in school still, getting ready to get the next degree up and, you know, that kind of thing. I just turned 30. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, and he's like, do you still play? And I said, no, I wish I did. But, you know, around here, there's nowhere to play at. Because for a while, I was actually playing at the church I go to. And then they stopped using actual instruments except a background piano and, like, a background very light guitar. They got rid of the whole orchestra and band, which really irritated me. But it is what it is. Um, he's like, well, we have a, a community orchestra here where adults play. I was like, Really? never heard of it and I thought I looked all that up maybe I missed it and he was like yeah you should definitely try it out um so I did and I got in so I'm one of the uh, community orchestra players I play the viola again now I was looking through old like sheet music I had from high school and from church and I'm like remembering all the signs and not signs the symbols and you know practicing I remember all the notes I remember all the signs it's just the time signature that kind of threw me off a little bit I'm so used to reading four over four however you word that I always saw it as four over four like a fraction but uh um other than that, it's going to be cool, and I already have, like, a sample of what we're going to play so I can kind of catch up and try to match it as best as I can as I have sheet music coming in. It's going to be great. Now, the reason why I'm also saying this is because if, if I was going to have this opportunity, you know, in life before I had surgery, I probably would have said no, and this is why. Because before surgery, I had such little confidence in myself, and, you know, you can't really blame me because, you know, I'm getting close to the 350 the highest I ever was like in the 370s 360s 370s um you know nothing ever fit and I was just burning up all the time hot because you know the heavier you are the harder you are because you're carrying a lot of weight you know and just tired all the time because when you carry it around a lot you really do wear yourself out and just feeling really embarrassed and really gross about myself so I probably would have been like, yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm going to do it. Because, you know, all that together and then having to balance home life too and school. And it, it was just going to be too much. 
but I have so much more confidence in myself because of how all the weight I've lost from this surgery. Like this surgery not only helps you lose, you know, weight, but it like removes a lot of negativity and toxins. And a lot of it's just toxins that we create in our own mind, really. You know, I'm more confident, I'm a lot happier, I'm a lot um, more at rest with myself. You know, when I'm out in public, I don't feel like this really big old out of shape blob just walking around looking disgusting. I mean, that's how I used to think all the time. Also, I probably wouldn't have taken this opportunity if I didn't have surgery and had lost all the weight I have so far. The other reason why I probably wouldn't have done it is because, um, again, nothing fits. And when it would be showtime and I have to wear a certain type of clothes or a color or whatever, I'm probably not going to find anything nice. And if it is, it's going to look really, really raggedy and I'm going to be the really fat one sticking out that doesn't look good at all simply because she's way too overweight and can't find anything nice to wear. It is what it is, you know. Um, for example, I, I have a malfunction in a wardrobe one time. When I graduated high school, my senior year, I gained a lot of weight my senior year and didn't really remember that. Because in the beginning of the semester, or not the beginning of the semester, the beginning of the school year, we had to um, pre-order our cap and gown. And I was certain size, and then by the end of the school year, I was a different size. And let me tell you what, I had to wear like the smallest girdle I could put on and I had to like hold my breath in as much as I could. Like I, I, when I went to sit down, I had to like sit on my side almost because I just couldn't sit down because I knew if I sat down normally, it would have just ripped. I know it was that tight. Wardrobe malfunctions while you have a weight problem is a serious problem. Not just because they don't fit and they can rip, but you just cannot find anything nice. And if you do happen to find something really nice, it costs a fortune. Oh my goodness. I mean, I had found really pretty clothes and actually worn them just to try them on. And it costs way, way more than if you were to have the same thing for someone that's only like a medium or a large. You know, and I'm not going to say company names. I don't even remember where it was a long time ago because I'm not that kind of person. But even if I did remember, I wouldn't have said the company name. But anyways, that is a big thing that goes on when you have a serious weight problem. You cannot find anything nice to wear. And whatever you do end up wearing, everybody looks at it and go, Oh, yeah, we know why you're wearing that. Because you can't find anything nice to wear because it's too small you're too big for regular clothes. It happens. It is true. That is a true thing. But see, I don't have to worry about that really anymore. Now, I've never really been the fashionable person. You know, me, I've said before several times, I am a jeans, t-shirt, hoodie, regular Converse, um, black nail polish, hair in a ponytail, eyeliner, eyebrow, I'm fine. Chapstick, I'm fine. You know, I don't do all the extra stuff unless it's like a really important deal. Other than that, I just don't find it really necessary. Like, I even hate carrying a purse. Like, I hate carrying a purse. To this day, I hate it so much. It is such a drag. Um, but I was just over here thinking to myself, you know, if this was like a year ago, I wouldn't have taken this opportunity. But I heard it now and thinking, yeah, and I'll look great and I'll be so much happier because I'm back doing something that I really enjoyed doing for a very long time was playing in the orchestra. And I wouldn't have felt so happy about it if I wouldn't have had surgery. It's true. So, yeah, having that surgery, guys, I mean, it's going to get bad before it gets better. But, you know, it does get better. If you want that surgery, go get it. And I see all the time on um, social media where pages about the surgery where people will say, well, I want to get the surgery, but my boyfriend's trying to convince me not to, or my parents are saying it's a really bad idea. Don't listen. I comment every time. They're not going to be the one having success. If I mean, if they're wanting to tell you to not have surgery, it's because they're very insecure about themselves and they want to keep you there. Like my dad always tells me, misery loves company. Don't give them the company, okay? Go get your surgery, lose all that weight, Gain your life back. Get the color back in your face. Get the sparkles back in your eyes, okay? Don't let people take that from you because it is not easy to get that chance. You know, don't let that go. Go get your life back. But at the same time, it is a surgery. It's the biggest help, but it's not the only help.
you have to be able to help yourself too by keeping yourself out of that refrigerator and you'll know it too because when you get out of that surgery talk about barf 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 but you know that's how you figure stuff out but you can do it okay do it for yourself do it for your happiness okay I did it for my happiness and now I'm back in the orchestra again but um, I'll see you guys later. The first concert is October 1st, so I'll make sure to get a little clip in here and there for you. So I'll see you guys later. Have a good rest of the day.